If you follow the channel for any sort of time, you know that I love shooting traditional gear. And if you're new to the channel, I want to say welcome. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you enjoy the video, share it with a friend. Today we're going to be talking about how to shoot a recurve, how to shoot a longbow. And I remember, man, I've been in it since I was a kid. I remember when I was a kid uh, going with my dad to a tournament that we call Tana Hill. That's here in Alabama, kind of towards Birmingham. And I remember us shooting this tournament when I was a kid and I had my, my deer hide quiver that he made on my back with my little short wooden arrows with a little green and wood color bear bow. And I remember going through the trails as a 3D tournament, would go through the trails and I'd shoot at one of the targets and my arrow would bounce off because I wasn't pulling anything. And that was some of the earliest memories that I have of shooting traditional gear. And since then, I've shot traditional gear, I've hunted with traditional gear, um, I've done tournaments and, and whatnot. But my plan here in this video is to just help you get on your journey of shooting maybe a recurve or a longbow. Maybe you're new to it, maybe you're switching, like there's some guys that I know that I've seen on Facebook recently, they're switching from a compound to a recurve. They wanna give it a shot this year. They wanna see if they can kill deer with, with uh, traditional gear, with a recurve or a longbow. And it can be done, it's tough. I've killed whitetails, I shot my first turkey last year. I killed small game with traditional gear. It's tough, but it can be done. There's a few steps that are just like the foundation of any archer that we're gonna go over. I hope these are helpful. And as we're talking about each step, I'm gonna be talking about specific things that I do, specific things that may be able to help you out in your journey of shooting traditional gear and some things that I've adjusted from and you know maybe I do now. So let's jump in. So whenever you, and I'm assuming that you've got a recurve or a longbow that you've already purchased, that you've already got at home, if not, you just kinda gotta find what works for you. Whenever you're ready to practice, you're gonna come up to the line or wherever you're at in your yard or wherever you're practicing, shooting, and you're gonna have your feet about shoulder width apart. So your feet are gonna be shoulder width apart and the toe closest to the target. You're just gonna kinda take a step back and put it forward, just to, or your toe forward, just a smidge. What, what I'm doing here is I'm opening up my chest in, um, in the way that I'm shooting because if I just stand side by side, or my feet side by side, and I'm, I'm turning, that's kind of a hard turn. So what we wanna do is kinda of open our chest up to where we can easily turn towards our target. Next thing you're gonna focus on are your draw, your, your draw hand and your bow hand. So this is my bow hand because this is what I am holding on to the bow with. And this is gonna be my draw hand. This is what I'm gonna be drawing the bow back with. And so this specific bow is a RK1 that I shoot. This is a recurve that I'll be hunting with this year. This is what I shot my turkey with last year. And if you haven't seen that video, check that out. It's a sweet video. Um, but this particular bow, I'm gonna shoot specific to the, like to it. And so on my, on my handle though, it's gonna be about the same with anything that I'm shooting. So I want my lifeline of my palm, where, that, where my thumb kinda got that groove in my hand, I want that to be inside that palm right there, inside that handle of the bow. So if I were to hold this up and point it at the camera, I can just sit here and wave at the camera. That's how I want my hand to be. I don't want my wrist to be out like this, kind of curved out. I don't want my wrist to be curved in because that's gonna, one, pop the absolute crap out of your arm and it's not gonna be comfortable. It's gonna hurt your wrist. So you're gonna get that wrist kind of turned to where if I were, again, to let go, I can just wave at the camera. I want that to set nice and comfy up into that handle. Second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my draw hand. So there are a few things that you can do or a few ways you can shoot a recurve or a longbow. You can shoot split fingers. So it looks like this. This is how I shoot my, my hunting bows. This is how I shoot when I'm hunting. I'll shoot three fingers under if I'm doing tournaments or something. So one over and two under with three fingers. One over, two under is called split finger. Now, 
the groove where I'm, where I'm placing that string is that first groove in each finger. That first bend is where I'm putting that string in each finger. My first finger, middle finger, third finger. And so I'm going to split that arrow just like that. If you can see that, I'm going to just split just like that. So that's called split finger. Another one you can do is three fingers under. It's the same concept. You're going to put the string on the first groove of your fingers and you're going to slide it right up against the arrow. I've seen where people will shoot hunting tournaments, however they want to, just like this, and they've been successful. It's just whatever works for you. So those are the those are two things that you can do when it comes to your draw hand. Next, we're going to focus on our anchor. So I'll kind of scoot closer here to the, the camera. So my bow hand set, my draw hand set. Now I'm going to, first off, just kind of go to a relaxed position. I'm facing towards the target. Relaxed position. Here's why I want to do a relaxed position, especially if you're new to shooting traditional gear. This natural curvature in my arm, how my arm is curved just like that. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. That's just my arm relaxed. I do not want to extend that or draw that in at all whenever I'm coming up to pre-draw with this bow. So let me show you. Looking at the target, I'm going to scoop up to pre-draw. It's called pre-draw because you're not drawing yet. Watch my arm. My arm does not bend and it does not extend. If I extend, again, I'm going to pop the snot out of my arm, but you just want your natural curve of your arm to be where your arm goes, all right? So whenever I bring that up and I'm about to draw, I'm going to take whatever my draw hand is, if it's right or left, whichever one, I'm going to let this elbow follow up with me. I'm not going to let this elbow float down like this. I'm going to just kind of bring my elbow up. I don't want my elbow tucked in, is, is what I'm saying. So I'm going to bring my elbow up with it, and then I'm going to draw, and then I'm going to anchor. Now, I'm going to switch here so I can actually talk to you to something really cool. Oh, by the way, here's this longbow, self-made longbow. It's going to be the, the same things that I'm talking about will apply to this longbow as well. I promise it's going to be a lot of the exact same things. If you can do what I'm doing with my recurve, I, I could be telling you the exact same things with this longbow here. This is something really cool I want to show you guys because uh, I don't care how immature or how uh, often you hear these things because these are, are going to always be, as an archer, these things are always going to be the foundation, the things that you want to keep practicing and keep perfecting. This is a PVC bow. This is a half inch PVC that we've cut off in length to about what a, a longbow or recurve would be. And we've drilled holes in the end and we just ran paracord and knotted the paracord on the end, run it through, and now look, we've got a string. Made a cool little paracord handle. This is something that you can make for little to nothing. You can go to Lowe's, get a half inch PVC pipe, and you can be practicing and, and practice without creating bad habits. Here's what I mean by that. I can talk to you guys and explain what I'm doing and explain my form with ease. And I can let it go whenever I want to release. And I can do that over and over and over. So something cool that you guys might, might want to check out. So let's pick back up where we were. So I'm about to draw. When I draw, bringing that elbow up, natural curvature in my arm. Now, do you want to cant your bow? You can. You want to leave it straight? You can. I've just, the more that I've shot, I've just got a, a little bit of just a natural cant that I always go to. When I draw, I'm going to anchor, this is the way I do it, I'm anchoring in the corner of my mouth with my middle finger, all right? Corner of my mouth with my middle finger. When I anchor, I'm aiming I aim with the tip of the arrow. There are different ways you can aim. You can gap shoot, which means that uh, if you're, let's say I'm here at 15 yards, you can gap shoot and you know how, how either low to hold it or high to hold it to hold that gap to where you know it's gonna hit the target. Um, you can 
hold like point on, use the tip of your arrow and aim like that. You can string walk or face walk if you're using the tip of your arrow to aim. And you can shoot instinctive, which is you pull, you, you draw your bow and you aim and you go, that feels about right. And that's you shooting in, instinctive. And the more you practice, the more things you'll be able to work on. And if you have any questions, be sure to let me know because I'd love to help out. If you're having some issues and just can't figure something out, please shoot me a message and I'll, I'll try to be able to help you figure out what you need to do or um, help you. Maybe if you're local in Coleman, you come shoot or we'll go to Vans and fix something that needs to be fixed. Anyway, if you need help, let me know. So whenever you come up to draw, I'm going to draw an anchor in the corner of my mouth. Whenever I'm aiming and I'm ready, I'm going to release and I'm going to keep my bow hand up and my draw hand that I was drawing the bow back with when I release is going to go right to my ear. The reason that we teach that, I teach that in um, different lessons that I've given and uh, people that have shot recurve or shot compound, things like that nature, this thing called back tension or back pressure. You want to always try and keep back tension if you can which means you, you kind of think about it like your shoulder blades are touching together. Or uh, Clay Hayes, he did a video and he explained it really well. Pretend that there's somebody's hand right behind your elbow and when you draw, you're just hitting their hand with your elbow. That's keeping back tension. And so whenever I release, keeping my bow hand up and my release hand or draw hand here on my ear, that just forces me to keep my hand up and my back pressure tight. That's what that does. Now, you don't want to be uncomfortable. You don't want to be squeezing your back and thinking, man, I, this hurts. You don't want to do any of that. So whenever I come up, I draw, I release, boom. The reason I'm keeping my bow hand up and the reason I'm doing all of these steps is to focus on the uh, creating good habits instead of bad habits. I always want to try to create good habits instead of bad habits. And the more that I can do the same when it's good habits, the better off I'm going to be. So for example, if I'm moving my bow arm when I shoot or I drop my bow arm when I shoot, that's a bad habit because I'm not going to be consistent with that. I want to try to be as consistent as I can possibly be in everything that I do. So let's go over this real time real recurve. With this specific one, I forgot to mention, I shoot a finger tab. You can shoot a finger tab or you can shoot a glove. I will shoot a glove with my longbow. I'll shoot finger tab with this recurve. Why do I do that? Just my personal preference. You can shoot tab, you can shoot glove. It's totally up to you. I definitely encourage you to shoot something because otherwise you're going to have calluses on your fingers like I do here and those are extremely rough. But let's do this. So I'm going to knock an arrow. And again, I've, I've touched just the surface of how to get started shooting a recurve. Because uh, I could talk about arrow setup. I could talk about brace height. I could talk about um, poundage and, and all of those things. But this is just to get you started on how to properly shoot a recurve, feel comfortable shooting a recurve or a longbow to where you don't feel like, man, I don't know a single thing about it. So let's put this all together. So my stance is normal. Shoulder width apart. This looks good to me. I'm going to set my bow hand and my draw hand. Remember, bow hand, I'm in that lifeline of my palm. And then my draw hand, I'm going to set split finger just like I do in that first crease of your finger. And I'm going to just go to relaxed position. Gives me time to just pick a spot. I'm going to come up to pre-draw, draw, anchoring in the corner of my mouth, and release. Just shot an arrow. If that worked for you, I hope it did. Let me know in the comments, and I hope this video was helpful. And good luck to you if you're out there hunting for the first time with traditional gear. Remember, you can do it. It is not impossible, and I am by no means the best archer there is by a long shot, but I've gotten it done and I've had some success and I hope you do too. Hope you enjoy the video. I'll see you on the next one.
Gonna shoot just one arrow at this bear. This is the one that counts. The one that's the deer in front of you, or the bear in front of you, or the state record in front of you, or elephant, giraffe. Anyway, you get the picture. One arrow. If I'm shooting a target and scoring, nice, but a little far back. But that'll do. That will do. That's why I practice. <laughs>